start you talking. You and I were always bumping, you know. You don't want people to start know. talking, Joe. <laughs> Well, we were always, because of that, that, we, that wire cable, thing in the floor, I was always pushed up against the time. Chris, and, and every meeting I did with him was like, we had a huge thing like that. Council? All right, good evening everyone, and it's my honor to bring this first city council meeting to order. If you would join me with a prayer and the Pledge of Allegiance. Am I on? Yes. Okay. Dearest Lord, thank you for your many blessings on the community of Lebanon. I especially thank you for all who are gathered here this evening and to those who contributed to and celebrated the grand opening of our hard-won and long-awaited downtown City Hall. Grant that our mayor, city officials, and this council have ears to listen to the people we serve and the wisdom to govern justly. Grant, too, that we always act to benefit those who live and work in our beloved city of Lebanon. May I pray. And Cheryl, if you could please call the roll. Mrs. Hados? Here. Mr. Martin? Here. Mr. Miller? Here. Mr. Wirtz? Here. Chairman Morales? Here. Okay. And you all have received the, the minutes for April 25th, 2022. Are there any additions, deletions, or corrections? Hearing none, the minutes will stand as distributed. Uh, you've also received the budget report for April First, let there be light, <laughs> April 30th, 2022. And Mayor, if you could give us a rundown on the budget where, we're, where we stand right now. Yes, thank you. So our, with a little more than 33% of the fiscal year completed, revenues are at 52% and expenditures almost 25%. So we are performing better than budget in both categories. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Any questions from Council concerning the budget? And from anyone in attendance? Okay. Hearing none, we'll move on to the uh, budget report for January 1st through April 30th, 2022. And Mayor, if you could give us, or did we just? We just did that. We just did that, excuse me. Ugh. Um, moving on, or any, any questions from council on the budget? None, okay. And moving on, we have an update on the American Rescue Act funding by Mayor Capello. Okay, so we received a total of 46 applications with a total request of 4.4 million. We had $1 million available. We had five applications for city-owned facilities and we removed those because we didn't feel that was fair. Six applications did not meet qualifications. Um, for example, not located in the city, ineligible projects, or an incomplete application, which we did provide an opportunity for that to be corrected. And then one application was withdrawn. So there were 34 applications that remained that were considered by the committee. Now the review committee consisted of the decision-making committee members Former Lebanon City Council Chair Wayne Carey, he's been a businessman for give or take 50 years. He was involved in community nonprofit organizations. Judy Williams Henry, she's a business owner and she's involved with the education system and the arts. And Jose Torres, he's a retired nurse and thus has a healthcare background. The city provided documents to them and supported them by obtaining additional information as they asked for it so they could make an informed decision. The review committee did not make any of these decisions lightly. Each application was discussed in detail, and the committee, again, even asked for additional information 
uh, so they could be informed. Some of the factors that played a major role in their decision making was they looked at projects that impacted individuals with addressing mental health and physical health needs, projects that impacted our youth, that impacted our veterans, that impacted our homeless. They looked at the overall number of people that would be positively impacted by the project. On, uh, they looked at projects that had a physical impact on the city. And they also looked at the organization itself and whether or not that organization they felt had the capacity to run the program and also they looked at how it was going to be sustained in future years, not just for like the first year of a program. <clears throat> now I would like to add that the city may consider funding potentially some of the projects that are relying on other sources of funding once we know that the other funding is secure. We also are going to look at the requests involving city-owned facilities separately. Um, again, we did not believe it was fair to include it in the $1 million allotment when it was involving city property. So I'm going to run down um, the list of organizations and the amount that um, was allotted towards them and what the project name is. And this would be out of the 34 applications remaining. So Halcyon Activity Center for a new air conditioner, $25,000. Developmental and Disability Services of Lebanon Valley, an early intervention program, 40,000. Friends of Coleman Memorial Park for youth activities in the park, $2,084. The Lebanon County Youth Advocate Program for GAP Work X at Lebanon High School. That's $153,650. Lebanon Family Health Services, <coughs> excuse me, for preventative reproductive health services for low income city residents, $39,875. Lebanon County Christian Ministries, Fresh Start, $160,600. Lebanon Valley Conservancy, a heritage map, $4,000. SARC, for advocacy and crisis response for child sexual abuse survivors, $31,861. SARC, for at-risk residents, camp, confidence, achievement, mindset, problem solving. Oops, sorry, wrong line. The SARC was at-risk residents, $5,000. The Lebanon Valley Family YMCA for Confidence, Achievement, Mindset, Problem Solving Camp, $127,008. Lebanon Valley Council on the Arts, Gallery 770 Modernization, 6,800. The Community of Lebanon Association for Downtown Lebanon Tree Lighting, 15,452. The Lebanon Rescue Mission for the Lebanon Free Clinic Future Model Post-COVID-19, 45,000. Lebanon Rescue Mission Tent to Home Gap Housing for Families, 25,000. Compere of Lebanon for Compere and Compere Core, 50,000. Making a Difference Lebanon PA 2022 Education Series, 2,700. Habitat for Humanity, the Lebanon City Home Rehab Program, 50,000. Lebanon Foundation, Downtown Marketing, 10,000. Lebanon Valley Volunteers in Medicine, Free Clinic, $65,970. Communities and Schools of Pennsylvania, Communities and Schools of PA Integrated Student Supports in the Lebanon School District, 80,000. Domestic Violence Intervention of Lebanon County Shelter Support Services, 60,000. And that totals $1 million. Thank you, Mayor. Do we have any questions from Council? Have the funds been released? No. Timing on that? Um, and then we'll have to finish
Thank you. Any other questions? What was the uh, original total of the applicants again? 4.4 million. And then the, so we had, um, you said 14 were uh, appro approved at this point. Um, what was the total uh, different uh, numbers of organizations? Um, so I can tell you um, off the top of my head, the projects that were on city properties was 1.75 million. Okay. So if you take that off of the 4.4 4 yeah. million. Okay. Um, Thank you, Janelle. So there were um, applications that were ineligible on the city-owned properties and so all the city-owned properties, the ineligible um, applications and the application that withdrew, all of those totaled a little more than 2.182 million. And then the remaining 2.24 were for eligible projects that we had to cut down to a million. So some of those were not funded. Some were not funded at 100%. Um, and it varies. I'd have to go through that. Thank you. And do we have any questions from anyone in attendance this evening? Mm -hmm. Yes. And any other questions? Okay. Mayor, thank you. And if you could pass on a thank you to those that sat on the board to, to go through all those applications. Yes. I'm sure that was not an easy yes. it process. Yes, it involved many hours. Yeah. yeah, they did not take the task lightly. And we appreciate their time and efforts. Okay, moving forward, we're, we have one resolution tonight. Resolution 19 ratifying an agreement between the City of Lebanon and the Lebanon Police Bargaining Association, and the agent of the Fraternal Order of Police, Lodge Number 42, for the year of 2022 through 2024. Do I have a motion for Resolution Number 19? Yes, I will make a motion for the adoption of Resolution Number 19. Thank you, Richard. And do I have a second? So moved. Thank you, Chris. The resolution's been moved and seconded. Mayor, if you could give us a little rundown sure. on this good news here. To summarize, yes, it is good news. Um, the term of the contract is a three-year agreement, which is pretty standard. Our compensation, we agreed to increase the starting salary from, in 2021, it's 49300 to 57000 for 2022. Um, and then we removed the fourth step. There used to be four steps before. The steps would be not only what we call the cost of living increase, which has generally been 3000 yeah, 3000 3% each year for the last several years. Um, but there were, for four years, steps. So they got a step, incremental um, step increase for each year that they were on the force, and then they'd get their cost of living. So we removed the fourth step, the fourth year step, and increased the starting salary by more um, so that we can try and entice new, new hires for the most part. Um, everyone else will receive a salary increase of 3%. We're also providing an additional 50 cents an hour for any officer who the city determines is fluid in a language that meets our operational needs. So definitely if they can speak Spanish, but also if someone can speak Arabic or, you know, we'll determine other languages based on our, our population and what our needs are. The sick leave allotment decreased from 30 days um, that they can earn each year to 20 days. Insurance, the employee deductibles uh, increased by $50 for single and $100 um, for a family each year, uh, and that would be in each uh, of the three years. The employee premium share increased by $5 for single per pay per year and $10 for all other um, types of, of insurance per pay per year um, and that would be for each of the three years 
And then the spousal penalty, that increased by $5 for each year for the, all the different categories of the, for the types of insurance. The prescription co-pays increased for um, prescription drugs for 30 day and 90 day. There was no change for the generic, um, but it increased by $5 for the preferred and non-preferred plans, and that would be for each of the three years. At the beginning of this year of 2022, the urgent care copay increased from $25 to $50, and also the opt-out payment um, for officers who remove themselves from the city's health care plan, including dental, uh, would be reimbursed for 25% of the monthly premium cost of the single coverage plan. And in 2021, that was 1300 Our COBRA, this is based on our COBRA rate, and our COBRA rate for the single plan this year was $1,180 and odd cents. They'll be paid per pay. Um, they don't need to be off of it for a whole year to receive this benefit. And we're hoping that this will help us save in insurance cost um, because there was really no incentive for uh, an employee to be off of the, of the city's health insurance program. And then the last item was the implementation of a 12 hour shift. And that would be on, when we first would implement it, it would be on a trial schedule. And that would be for up to one year, the trial or the pilot would be. And that will only start when both parties agree to implement that. Thank you for that rundown, Mayor. You're welcome. And are there any questions from council? I know, Mayor, we got a lot of the things that we were, we were talking about trying to implement, so yes. that's, that's great news. And hopefully we'll see that reflected in our next uh, round of hiring. Yeah. Are there any questions from anyone in attendance this evening? Yes. The, So the, you're talking about the first three years for the steps? Those are greater than 3%. The, yes. So like, so the first year, um, it would be $57,000 base salary. And then the second year, for a second year uniformed officer, in 2022, it would be 59,457, and a third year officer would be 62,801. So then the following year, they would go up, so if they were a first year, then in 2023, they would be in the second year subsequent. And then for anyone that's not in that tier, they would get 3% increase for each of the three years. Any other questions? Hearing none, Cheryl, if you would call the roll. Mrs. Hados? Yes. Mr. Martin? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Mr. Wirtz? Yes. Chairman Morales? Yes. The ayes have it. The motion is approved. And that actually is our short uh, meeting tonight. We do have one other item on the agenda for from Santa Dissinger in reference issues with yard waste pickup and water runoff. And Sandra, if you could come up and to the podium here and give us your name and your address. And I don't know if the mic is on. I guess we'll find out. Well, okay. Can you hear me or? If you would, ju you could, if you could just use the mic. Okay. Thank you, Sandra. All right, the, You're the, good. the You're first good. thing I would like to discuss is the, uh, the diver diverting of water. Um, I have a neighbor, the Hartman family, and I have a picture here to show you, because I figure that's better than words. This is what I discovered.
there have been a lot of other issues with this neighbor, but this is the one I'm presenting to you. Uh, the second problem comes from a neighbor on the other side. Now, my property on Quentin Road is right across from Golden Corral. The house was built in 51, in my family home. It goes all the way back to half a block. And there is a, a, a grass or dirt road that goes out over to York Street, which was the original road when Mr. Grosterfone had his barn in the back of where our property is now. And my parents also bought that land so that we would have an access road to the back of the property. Um, there's fence along there too. And then last fall, I had other fences to put up. I couldn't afford to put a wooden fence up again. So I put a uh, wooden post and wire. And you can see the pattern. Two different sections, if you look closely, it's two different sections to be affected. And I think those are the same ones, the same area that affected my other fence the same way. And you'll see there's like a tunnel there where the water went through the fence. So Sandra, you addressed this with the with the neighbor, and he actually cut back. That's when he cut back the. I don't the know when he cut back because I did talk to him three different times. Mm -hmm. My husband talked to him once, and when he finally changed it, I have no idea because I kept driving past, and it was still the same way. I mean, it looks like they're back off of. The After the fence line. came down, I saw yeah, then it was different. Yeah. But I didn't think it was legal to divert your water <coughs> onto some, where someone's fence is. And that's actually what was done. And I'm just wondering if something can be done that they daren't divert their water onto where my fence is. I can't afford to keep putting fences up. I can't do that. Absolutely. I had to pay to have it replaced. I had all those sections had to be taken down the driveway and out. I had to take care of all that. I can't keep doing that. So ma'am. Yes. Um, so when you look at the house and the downspouts that are against the wall of the house, 
they look older, they don't look new. The pieces that are like laying on the ground, those look new. Um, so I would have to assume, I don't know for sure, but just looking at the pictures, that they had gutters and downspouts that came down before, but maybe they just made them longer. And I know that you had contacted Robin's office, the Public Works Department, and Robin contacted them, and as you can see in the one picture, they did shorten them. Yes, but when? That's the question, when? I don't know myself because I generally don't go York Street. I don't usually come down York Street. Okay, well, when she was notified, she contacted them, and they changed it, and they shortened them. Oh, they did change it then, but I don't know how long it was there before. I have no idea. You understand what I'm saying? I don't know when he did that, and I don't know when he changed it, because I went down through there, I would say, after the last time Bill talked to me, maybe about two weeks, and then I noticed it was changed. Okay. But I don't know how long it was there before that. That's the point. I don't know okay. that. And we don't know it either. Once no, we I know that. Right. Okay. That's why I, I guess, didn't give a definite date. So I guess my point is, it looks like, I don't know, it looks like when you look at these downspouts, you can tell that they're the same color as this. They look older. They look like the older style, whereas this <coughs> looks new, and it's white. Well, that's right, yes. So I think these were in existence before. Right, but which so way? So what I'm saying is I don't think based on how it looks like on the picture. Well, they were never they facing towards my fence before, ever. So where would they have? The way people normally do, uh, usually houses never shoot their spoutings towards the next property. It's always shot into their yard. I mean, that's the way it is at my house. Okay, and again, I don't know yeah, unless no, you would I'm have other pictures or someone else would have other pictures, but it looks like the elbow is coming and facing your Towards property. my fence, rather than into older. his yard. It looks older, though. The spotting. It doesn't matter when you have a spotting coming down, you can put anything to direct it the way you want to direct it. Yeah. This to me looks older, and you can see that elbow comes out Doesn't this way. This looks new to me, and then I think probably what happened, and I'm hoping that after Robin contacted them, they he saw it at all. Yeah. But I'm saying I don't know how long this was this way. I think there's an ordinance okay. that addresses it. You know how long it was that way because I got to the point I would get upset because different things were done down at my driveway, yeah, no, so I just didn't go that way yeah. rather than be upset all the time. So I well, usually I guess, shoot down, um, I forget the name of the road. Well, I guess but that day I did. What I need to know is, if this angle shows that it was previously right. going here, and after we informed them, hey, you can't do this, and he shortened it. That's the way this was. You, what else do you want us to do? Because where is your property line the fence line? Right here, right along, yeah. right along there. So and this is now one foot nine inches from my property line. So the water is still running down. Well, you can see by the new fence I put up. How far is that, ma'am, now? It's, it's, it's one foot and nine inches. Okay. Because I measured it. Currently. Currently, it's one foot nine inches. Pardon? Currently, Currently, it's one foot nine inches. Two weeks ago, I measured it. Okay. Because I wanted to know exactly what it was. Okay. Now, I understand what she's saying, the downspout, but when that was there before, that was the way a normal spouting is. It wasn't long like that. Mm -hmm. That thing extends that far from the concrete blocks that it rests on. But it's still on his property or their property. That's right, but the problem is all that water is being flushed my way. I look at the spoutings at my house, every spouting, shoots it into my yard. It doesn't shoot it towards my neighbor. Mm -hmm. Look at your spottings. I bet yours is the same way. No, it shoots into the, the alleyway. Um, oh, well, that's an alley, well. I'm sorry, street. That makes sense. I don't know, Robin, um, I don't know, <coughs> Corps Mayor, if you can help us out. I don't know that there would be an ordinance that would s state that we as long as it's not on, you, 
on your property regarding man. Regarding this issue, when yes. Robin contacted them and they made it shorter, we thought that had resolved it. I, I mean, that's what I saw from the photographs, that it was significantly shortened, or it was shortened. Okay. I mean, the only other thing we can do... My, like I said, my thing is, I don't know how long it was there before I saw it. I right. have no idea. And neither do we. I but don't know. I no. guess our point is, we did contact them, he did shorten it, and now it's on his property, and there is one feet nine inches of grass for the water to soak into before it would come to your property. And when you look at the downspout and the elbow, it looks like... It was old, and that's how it was directed before. So I don't know that, except for what he did previously with putting a longer, and now we asked him to shorten it, and he did, I don't know what else we could do unless somehow we could prove that it was going in a different direction and he well, had you, changed it. You can it. see by the pictures at the fence, it's all like a channel there. When you look at the pictures of the fence, the new fence that was put up, it looks like where the fence was, though. I mean... Then what, what is corroding all around those two posts? What's causing that? So, just to build some context, when were those, uh, the pictures, when was the new fence replaced, and then when was the pictures taken? Okay, no, wait. Ask, ask your question one at a time, and I'll answer it. When was the, uh, when were the pictures taken? Okay, the one for the fence came down, that was taken, uh, the fence came down in the winter of 20. Why yeah. did the fence come down? I think because of the same reason you're seeing in the new fence. So you're saying Two it of the fell posts over. Were, huh? You're saying it fell over on its own. Two of the posts, I think, were the same as what you saw in the pictures here. The ground was all washed away. And I think the posts gave way. And how, how long was the fence there prior to that? How old was the fence? Um, I think the fence, I'm trying to remember. That fence was put in, I'm trying to think back. I would make an estimate around 2007. Okay, so give or take. It was replaced, because there was a fence there my parents had put in. Mm -hmm. And that fence was pretty in pretty bad shape, so I had it replaced. So then, when I'm was... I'm sorry, what were you saying now? <laughs> My second question, when was the fence replaced then? When, when did that new one get installed? You mean the, the one, I, the wire and... Mm -hmm, okay, correct. that was put in the fall of this, of... I know there's a 22, 21, fall... 21. My mouth's getting dry. Guess it's nerves. <laughs> well, thank you. So from when that was put in, that was put in late in the winter. That was put in um, maybe around November because he was trying to get in before the ground froze. And when I went out to do my mowing, I saw how two different sections, that was, there are two different sections, as you saw with the wire, it's, the ground is all washed away. And I'm, what I'm saying is, is that what happened to the other fence? Did the ground wash away and that's what caused two sections to come down. And what happened is when that happened, it pulled, the weight of that kept pulling section after section. It pulled on half my fence. So ma'am, when you look at some of the posts, would you say that maybe they were rotted posts? They don't look rotted to me. That's why well, I they, took the they picture. They actually are, that's, a, that's absolutely wet rot. There's no question about this, that. This is something that I have worked with before. Um, not that this can be a determination or anything just based off of a picture, but it is very common with wooden posts to rot starting directly at ground level because um, that's, that's where they get the, the, cha the change of weathering um, from the, the freeze and thaw and just the different weathering rate. And then also they have collection of moisture right at the ground level. So that's what it looks like, but we make a determination of that. All right, now, I, I have talked to a business owner no, no. that's located on Cumberland Street, which is North Cornwall. Mm -hmm. He had someone right next door to him. He has a fence up, a wooden fence. 
And this man had a swimming pool in there and then brought ground in and covered it over. So this guy started running uh, a pipe or, you know, to get rid of the water from his house, and I guess, well, I don't know where else. And what they discovered was when he talked to the council in uh, North Cornwall, they discovered that when he covered that pool over, the, I can't think what I want to say now, mm -hmm. the drainage was not right when the pool was covered over. And they said that's why he was having trouble with the water and he was diverting it onto this man's where his fence was. And he said, so they made him stop diverting the water because it was after his fence. So I understand what you're saying. I don't know of that exact situation, but I am envisioning what you're saying and that makes sense to me. Um, you cannot divert, there's a stormwater law, that, that stormwater act, that you cannot cause an increase or like velocity, increase of velocity of water onto someone else's property and you can't change the direction that will cause them harm. But again, in your situation, and I, I don't know because I don't know if there's other information that I'm not aware of. When I look at the pictures that you presented, it looks like the downspout on your neighbor's house, it's old downspout, and it looks like the elbow is facing towards your property. However, I also would agree that the extensions that are white look newer and I can't imagine that a house was constructed and they had downspouts going all the way to a neighbor's fence. So I would have to assume that someone put in long extensions. But when we were contacted and the public works director contacted the neighbor, he did shorten them. So I don't think he changed except for this, which he then corrected. And I don't know how long it was long, but when he corrected and shortened it, I would assume it looks like a reasonable amount of extension coming off of a downspout. So I would think he put back what it was, like how it was before. So then that means then there wouldn't right now be a change from how it was. So I don't know that we can make him do any more than what he's already done. Unless someone can show us something, hey, this house was built in 1950, here's a picture of it, here's the downspouts, and he changed them. But until we would have that, I don't know. And unfortunately, stormwater runoff is more of a civil matter between the two parties. So it's almost something that you would have to debate with your neighbor. Now, we did what we thought was right and because that's obviously he changed something that was easy for us to reach out to him and get him to change it. But I don't know if we can do more than that at this point based on what information we have. I mean, okay. No. Sandy, are you talking about the grass um, alley on, that's off of York Street going back to your property? 
Yeah. Is that where they're blocking it? Waste that's in the bottom of the that sheet there is that it's not one of the of incidents it, pictures of no, one of the incidents. Yeah, yeah, it's not. I'm saying the waste isn't in front of it. That's the right. Yeah, because it sits back, but it's it's clear. Yeah. And do you know who eventually, if he moved it, or you, no, you don't I know? Mean, okay. So let me just say this. So she had contacted us late last fall about this, and I talked to Robin about this. So I think there were two occasions where the yard waste was put out after we did our collection. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if there's a maybe confusion because on the other side of the street is North Cornwall Township and mm -hmm. their collection times are different from ours sometimes. Oh, okay. Um, but I think it's my understanding that you did admit that at least on one year you put your yard waste out after we went through, but. Oh, I'm not talking about mine. I can't talk okay. About okay. So, okay. So I told Robin that, um, you know, she deserves the pickup service as a taxpayer, um, and that a reasonable solution to me was that if she reaches out to us during that scheduled week, because it's a one week, you know, pickup, that where we say put it out this week, it may take us two weeks to pick it up, but we tell everyone here's the week to put it out for collection. And then however long it takes us to, you know, depending on weather conditions, manpower, whatnot. But if she would call us to say, um, schedule a time for her pickup, that she could put it out and we would come and get it. So that we don't have to worry about the driveway, not enough room, or whatnot. So it's just, if we can communicate better, and if she can tell us it's out, we'll go and get it and take care of it. So we don't have to worry about missing it or the neighbors not having enough room to place it or whatnot. And to me, I thought that was a reasonable solution. Okay. Who so should she contact, I'm Mayor? The public works director. So when you're ready to put out your yard waste during that one week. It's not good. Okay. If, if her neighbor puts. I'm going to get to that okay. Okay. So I have to admit, Mrs. Dissinger, looking at the pictures, I would not know that that's a driveway. Okay. Obviously, if you stand there and study it, you, you can probably figure it out, but I, I would not think that that's a driveway. Uh, if I didn't know that it was a driveway, I might. Uh, not looking at those pictures. However, um, if, this, this, is a, this is a very simple solution. Okay? Um, I would very strongly recommend you put some sort of signage on the gate that very clearly identifies that it's a driveway and it shouldn't be blocked. If you go to many other cities, you see garages at street level that have signs that say, do not block, private drive, whatever it may be. I would do that. I agree that it is, and I'm sure the fire chief would say, it's a hazard to block a uh, right of way to a property, correct? Well, okay, maybe, maybe not tree branches for one of your engines, but yeah, a, t a tentative yes, okay? So, so I would call the police if there's something blocking a right of way to a property. 
The actual pickup of the items is something for public works, okay? And then again, this is, this is then a civil matter and you need to take it up with your neighbor. Um, I so mean, I think what the city could do is, since this is a rather unique situation because it's difficult to determine that it is a driveway, Mr. Councilman, I would agree with you that if she could put a sign up, that would, I think, greatly help. But the city could probably paint, we don't like to go around painting everyone's driveways because we yeah. just can't do that. But this is, this, is un this is unique, I think we could do it. Um, we could paint it yellow and that maybe will help. That doesn't guarantee that the neighbor won't do it, but it would help, I think. So if you can put up a sign saying, please do not block driveway, and if we can paint the curb yellow, hopefully that will help. And, and if they indeed put waste out in front of her driveway, she should call the public works director. Robin. And then we will, you know, because there's steps we have to follow too. <laughs> so we would have to send them a notice and tell them, you know, they can't block a driveway. Okay. Okay. Well, now that I'm aware of your situation, I think it's a unique situation. I think it's not unreasonable for us to do this. Okay. It would have been public works, I would think. Yeah, it would be. You don't live there, correct, ma'am? I spend half my day there. Uh -huh. And I'm there a lot of times at night. I have a sick animal. Okay. He was a feral cat. So if I have a sick cat that needs medicine during the night, I'm there. Okay. They come and call over me. And not all in my house. <laughs> 
Well, I, 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 I appreciate you bringing this uh, in front of council, and I think now everyone is aware of the situation, and we can be more. Mayor, help me if we'll be. I, I think moving forward, I think we have a reasonable, yeah. hopefully, solution here. When you're ready to put out your yard waste during that, it has to be out by. We always have to. I'll never forget that. Okay. It wasn't like this was the goal. And okay. we're saying. Okay. So whatever the particular week of collection is, we need to have it out by that Monday. Give, give us a call and then we will make sure that we swing by and get it. We'll paint the curb yellow. If you can paint, excuse me, if you can place a sign on your fence that says, please do not block driveway. We'll see what we can do moving forward and I think more communication with the city and we'll hopefully resolve this absolutely thank you thank you okay at this time I will open up the floor to council any issues or concerns to, to bring forward None. And any questions from anyone in attendance this evening? Yes, sir. If you could come up to the mic and state your name and address, sir. Yeah. Maybe better at the podium. Per year, yes. So let me share this with you. So I know when Dr. Bartley was the superintendent, I worked very closely with her for the Great Lebanon Community Project. And that was one of the things that we were working on um, with the kids. We talked about recycling and the importance of recycling and there was a whole big um, program about it. Um, and also a lot of the kids in the elementary schools wrote essays about recycling or you know different things like that. So I'm pretty sure it, was being taught and um, now I'm not sure with if it's still continuing but I will be meeting with Dr. Abrams soon um, we meet every few months so I can ask them if they're doing that but I can add that um, our recycling coordinator um, is working putting together an educational program to try to approach the schools to see if it's something that maybe an assembly or something like that, or at least maybe some type of written um, publication that we could provide to the schools to talk to them more about recycling. And it's just unfortunately, you know, recycling went like this and now it kind of went like this because of the markets and things. But for our environment, you know, maybe we don't make the money that we used to and there's a 
really a cost to it, just like garbage, but it's important for our environment that we try and recycle as, as much as we can or as much as the markets will allow by buying it. Um, but we, we, can, we can approach them and ask. Yes. And I know the Youth Advocate Program was also um, working with the youth, um, specifically with throwing trash in the street. Because a lot of the kids, and this is coming from Youth Advocate, I'm not stating it, but in working with the youth, they determined, um, one of the advisors asked the kids one day in this particular group, why do you just throw the garbage out in the street like that? Like, there's garbage cans. Why are you throwing it in the street? And they were like, well, there's a street sweeper that comes by and gets it. Like, why shouldn't we? And like, they really had no idea. It's not like they were doing it to be, you know, disobedient. They were doing it because they weren't educated otherwise. So um, he was like, wow, you know, and started talking to them about, look, if the street sweeper goes, it's going to be a whole week before it comes back. And that's really not what we're supposed to do because if it rains, it's going to go in the drains. and. That causes issues for us, it's illegal. So he was trying to educate them as well. So between the schools, youth advocate, um, and then we also have a lot of nonprofit organizations that do a lot of trash pickup um, for the community, you know, in different sections. And, you know, that's important. And maybe yeah. what we can do is ask our recycling coordinator if she, maybe she can speak at one of those events before they actually go out and pick up the trash. That's actually probably a pretty good idea. And Norman, I think the other item as well is the population has grown and we are a much more uh, disposable society. Uh, and I think we're just seeing more trash in the city. Uh, and unfortunately, sometimes it, it doesn't, they either have it piled up and it finds its way out of those bags, so. Uh, It was a balloon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. We brought in the. Oh. What year do you think that was? I believe the VFW was involved in yeah, that. Yeah, and it was out at the stadium. Yeah. Okay, we'll check into it. We'll check into it. drink on your porch. That becomes public. So stay on the porch. <laughs> Thank you, Norman. <laughs> So I'm assuming, 
Okay, so that's not the one that was cut back? No. Oh. <laughs> Mayor, could we, could we send someone out to take a look? Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you, Mayor. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? I'll entertain a motion. I do have a question. Um, what is, I had, I had a, uh, a homeowner on um, 10th Street, which is getting resurfaced right now. The sidewalks and curvatures are getting torn up. Um, ask me what the requirements were for um, replacing the curbs. And um, he was confused where the markings were. Um, I wasn't sure how to help him at all, but I said I would at least ask what Okay. Uh, what determines what gets removed, what gets replaced. So a couple different sense. options. So if he's confused about the markings, he can call the Department of mm -hmm. Public Works and they have a list of what the engineer went out and their assessment. Okay. So they can talk to the homeowner and tell them what the engineer's report says. Okay. Or if it's more detailed, then maybe our engineer can contact them. Is there a way to um, to get a hold of that and me personally give that to him and be like, this is what the engineer like? Is it a, a sheet? Uh, this is a little a little much, I know, but um, I mean, I can talk to you afterwards. Too. Yeah, okay. Robin can get it for you. Any other questions? Is there a motion to adjourn? Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second that. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you next month.